Severus Snape once said, The dark arts are many, varied, ever-changing, and eternal. Fighting them is like fighting a many-headed monster, which, each time a neck is severed, sprouts a head even fiercer and cleverer than before. You are fighting that which is unfixed, mutating, indestructible. Since the announcement of Hogwarts Legacy and its promise to put players at the center of their adventure, allowing them to become the witch or wizard they choose to be, fans have wondered and speculated as to just how far we'll be able to go down the path of dark magic. We were given a taste of things to come near the end of the Hogwarts Legacy gameplay trailer in what had to be the most jaw-dropping moment of the entire showcase. In this video, we'll take a closer look at how Hogwarts Legacy may handle dark magic while considering the history of the dark arts in the wizarding world. Some of the earliest information we have on the dark arts comes to us through Harry's eyes and ears in his Defense Against the Dark Arts classes at Hogwarts, which of course is a confirmed class for Hogwarts Legacy. Of course, Harry Potter is the only known wizard to have ever survived the Killing Curse when Voldemort attempted to take his life on October 31st, 1981. But how exactly will this curse work in Hogwarts Legacy? How soon will we unlock it in the game? Can it be used anywhere or anytime? What about a cooldown meter? I believe there are some clues we can look for in the gameplay trailer that will help us determine a little more about how this curse will be used in the game. Our first clue comes in the moment just before we see Avada Kedavra in the trailer. In the lead up to that exact moment when we see the curse cast on screen, we hear the narrator say, Be careful where you choose to explore, as it may lead you down a darker path. Avada Kedavra! Now, we've known for a while that Hogwarts Legacy will give players a choice over the type of wizard or witch they wish to be. There are still a lot of details we don't know about how exactly this will play out, but the official FAQ reads, They will grow their character's abilities by mastering powerful spells, brewing potions, and harvesting magical plants as they face off against deadly enemies. Players will also encounter missions and scenarios that will pose difficult choices and determine what they stand for. So I believe this spell will only be available for wizards or witches who choose the dark path. I don't expect this to be something anyone can use at any time. Another interesting bit about Avada Kedavra is where we see it being cast. If you slow down the trailer, we can see what appears to be a basic goblin on the other end of the curse, and it's in this large, cavernous area with seemingly no other enemies around. This is in stark contrast to the rest of the trailer when pretty much any time we're shown in combat, it's in an area with multiple enemies. Except for another specific moment in the trailer when this happens. Devastate your enemies using various finishes. You can even use the mysterious, powerful magic your professors do not understand to obliterate your strongest foes. And so with this, we're introduced to a gameplay mechanic that's clearly going to be a core part of the game, and that is the finishers. First, in this scene, we see the player character repeatedly slamming the goblin with what could be a more violent variation of Descendo, or possibly something entirely new. And the next one is the lightning being summoned from above, which to everything I can find isn't anything we've really seen in the Harry Potter series before. Probably the closest thing we've seen is when Voldemort first took possession of the Elder Wand after Dumbledore's death, but in that instance, it wasn't used to kill or destroy a living target. Given the dialogue when this lightning moment appears on screen, it's pretty safe to say this spell somehow relates to the ancient magic our player has a unique ability to perceive and master. So my guess for Avada Kedavra is that it's one of these finisher type spells. We don't have the specifics for how they'll be used, but just from the name finisher alone, I think it's likely these won't be something we can cast at any time. They'll likely be something we have to build up to either through some type of combo meter, or it could just be purely a timing thing we have to wait out. I think it's also probable that that these finishing spells will be situational and probably unavailable in some scenarios. But that still leaves us with two other unforgivable curses, Imperio and Crucio. With Avada Kedavra confirmed, it's only natural for fans to immediately start wondering, what about the other two? Let's start with Imperio, which I think has some pretty clear utility that would work very well in a video game. The Imperius Curse is said to place the victim completely under the caster's control. The victim is put into a trance-like state and becomes very suggestible to the commands of the caster. However, those who are strong-willed may learn to resist it. In the series, we've seen this used in very short bursts, but have also heard of it being used over long periods of time to essentially imprison other humans against their will. As far as gameplay goes, you wouldn't expect Imperio to fall in the same finisher category as Avada Kedavra. Instead, I think we could see it being used for various stealth or puzzle sections in the game. Let's imagine a possible mission that maybe requires the player to enter the library's restricted section or perhaps a common room other than the one they belong to. There could be multiple ways to go about the mission, with some focusing on the light path and others focusing on a darker path. Light options could include things like trying to get permission from a teacher, maybe polyjuice potion, or even an invisibility cloak. 
The dark path, though, how about the Imperius Curse? Maybe Imperio against a teacher or an older student to try and gain access to this area. There are really so many possibilities for Imperio if implemented correctly. I think this one could offer some truly unique gameplay moments for those that go down the dark path. And then the question becomes, we do see Harry, Ron, and Hermione use this in the series as well, so should it be locked away only on the dark path? I think that's certainly an interesting debate because, yes, while Harry, Ron, and Hermione may have been justified in needing to use the curse in the moment they did, it is still considered an unforgivable curse, and almost certainly falls under the dark magic category. But then we have Crucio, also known as the Torture Curse. Now this one we get a perfect description of how this curse works and what it makes the other person feel when Voldemort casts it on Harry in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Voldemort raised his wand, and before Harry could do anything to defend himself, before he could even move, he had been hit again by the Cruciatus Curse. The pain was so intense, so all-consuming, that he no longer knew where he was. White-hot knives were piercing every inch of his skin. His head was surely going to burst with pain. He was screaming more loudly than he'd ever screamed in his life. So hearing that, Crucio could potentially work as a finisher, but I think it more likely that we could use this in the dark path as maybe a way to render attackers incapacitated in the middle of a fight. Or perhaps, I mean, if they wanted to go really dark, maybe even as a way of extracting useful information from them that could be beneficial for the story. While these three curses are what fans typically think of when it comes to the dark arts, the arts themselves actually go far deeper. The Harry Potter wiki defines the dark arts as any type of magic that is primarily used to cause harm, exert control over, or even take the life of another living human or creature. And while the dark arts do usually refer to spells, there are also dark potions, dark creatures, and of course, horcruxes, which are quite possibly the most sinister form of magic in the entire wizarding world, even more so than the unforgivable curses themselves. Author J.K. Rowling has only given vague descriptions of how one would create such an item, refusing to ever fully reveal the details because because of how horrific the process is. It's been reported that she did reveal the steps to making a horcrux to her editor, and that the editor promptly felt like vomiting afterwards. As for dark potions, fans need only to look at the end of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince for an example of such a potion. In order to retrieve Slytherin's locket in the cave, Dumbledore must drink the Emerald Green Potion, which has become known as the Drink of Despair. The locket cannot be retrieved until the entire potion has been drunk. While Dumbledore drinks the potion, he quickly devolves into a weakened and terrified state, so much so that he only wants to stop drinking the potion. Of course, immediately after this moment, we're introduced to one of the darkest creatures in the wizarding world, in theory. They are corpses, dead bodies that have been bewitched to do a dark wizard's bidding. Inferi have been confirmed to be in Hogwarts Legacy, in fact, we actually see them in the gameplay trailer, but it's unknown who created them in this time period. You see, Inferi are not naturally recurring and only exist when a dark witch or wizard has reanimated them with a dark curse. Trailers shown thus far for Hogwarts Legacy have led fans to believe that the goblin Ranrock and his rebellion is at the heart of the conflict. However, with Inferi present, there's sure to be a dark witch or wizard pulling some strings behind the scenes as well. Is it possibly Rookwood, the man who's working with Ranrock? Or perhaps in classic Harry Potter fashion, it will prove to be someone we first believe is an ally, such as Professor Fig, or maybe one of the other Hogwarts professors. There are countless other dark creatures we may possibly see in Hogwarts Legacy. Dementors were shown in the first trailer, but haven't been mentioned since. Acromantula were also seen very briefly in that same trailer. Of course, there are werewolves, boggarts, redcaps, lethifolds, banshees, basilisks, and plenty more. Hogwarts Legacy has already revealed quite a few creatures that are confirmed to be in the game, so it wouldn't surprise me at all to see more of these dark creatures show up when we finally get our hands on the game. And while I think there are some pretty clear applications for dark magic when it comes to the finishers, I actually think the more challenging one to think about is finishers for the light side. So that's something we're going to explore in a future video. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.